think of Volvo and what springs to mind. I bet it's an estate car. And it's over the years that this Swedish brand has managed to conjure up an ability to create really practical and comfort orientated cars that deliver things that families want really. But how does it transfer that into the modern age? Well, it does that with cars like the new V60. It's a compact estate car, which still aims to deliver that same level of practicality, but with a little bit more finesse and slightly more technology than you might think. This particular version has a plug-in hybrid set up underneath and inside. It's got some of the latest Volvo features that the brand has to offer. So before further ado, let's dive in and find out just what it has to offer. Volvo has really gone from strength to strength with its design, creating a family face that is now recognisable across its range of cars. The V60 includes some of the hallmark modern Volvo features that we've come to expect, like the Thor's hammer headlights, while around the back, the rear end design is very similar to that that you find on the larger V90. Tied together, I think it's a really sharp look, and it's one that brings Volvo very much into the modern age. Volvo interiors feel like they've only gone from strength to strength in recent years, and I like the fact that they aren't too cluttered and they're easy to get up to speed with right away. The fundamentals are great. We've got a nice seating position with well-padded chairs, and we've got build quality, which is excellent. Nice materials, all put together very well. The main infotainment system, well, the screen might be small by modern standards, but the way it works is really intuitive, and you haven't got too many menus to get cluttered with. Plus, Volvo has also started including Android and Google software in its infotainment systems, so you've got maps coming from Google right away rather than having to use it through Apple CarPlay or another third party function. This system also works really nicely because you can connect it to your Google account, which means that you can plot in a route on your phone in the house and it'll be sent straight to the car right away. So there's no mucking around as soon as you get in. Elsewhere, we've got some nice big chunky dials for the volume, which I really appreciate because one of the most important things is being able to change the volume easily. Get into the back seats of the Volvo V60 and you met with loads of space actually. I've got plenty of room for my legs and plenty of room for my feet too and headroom is very impressive considering this car has a panoramic sunroof. I think unless you're really really tall you're going to be very comfortable back here. I also like the fact that even though there is a large transmission tunnel Volvo has chosen to coat it in this rubber protective material which means that it's still going to look good even though it might get scuffed from time to time by people's feet. Ahead you've got heated seats for these rear ones on this particular model. Most importantly, you've got two USB-C charging points for people to charge up their devices. The seats themselves are nice and comfortable and they're well padded, plus we've also got ice fix mounting points for child seats on either side. In the middle, there is a clever little armrest with some neat little cup holders too. The V60 is able to offer plenty of boot space and at 529 litres, it's got more than enough load area for all occasions. As you can see, the cables don't actually take up too much space because they're put in this nice bag. And once you're in here, you've got a nice square load area without too much of a lip to contend with. You've also got some lash points down here to secure some of those items that you might want to keep held down. And there's a 12 volt socket at the side. This one also has a tow bar that's electronically operated with it via a button at the side. I think this definitely lives up to the usual Volvo name of practicality and the fact that there's no real change between hybrid and non-hybrid versions is just another string in the V60's bow. Think of Volvos and what do you think of? Do you think of big brown slabs designed to take the Labrador to a geography lesson? <laughs> um, perhaps, but in modern times Volvo has pivoted to become quite an edgy futuristic but still practicality focused car company making vehicles which are actually quite desirable well they are for me anyway i think they look great the v60 is the smallest estate car that volvo offers underneath the v90 and despite it being more compact it's still very usable this t6 version is actually quite punchy because it combines the two liter turbocharged petrol engine the four cylinder with electric motor and batteries for 342 brake horsepower, which is quite a lot. It means zero to 60 miles an hour in around 5.2 seconds. And 5.2 seconds to 60 is an acceleration time that we would have associated with most sports cars and maybe even some supercars a couple of decades ago. So to have a modern, comfortable Volvo estate car doing the same thing, I think that's quite interesting, really. 
because of the electric motors, this car is also four wheel drive and it's hooked up to an eight speed automatic gearbox and the whole package is nice and quiet. I'm getting a decent amount of wind noise, but apart from that, everything else is nicely isolated. And though the four cylinder can be a little bit grumbly at times, I don't find it too intrusive. It's pretty well isolated from, from coming into the cabin. This version isn't our design, which means that it comes on larger wheels. And as a result, I feel that the ride in some areas is a little bit firm. So if you are after a more comfortable version of the V60, then I'd be pointing you in the direction of the versions that don't have the larger alloy wheels. But everywhere else, this just feels like a very solid, assured driving experience. The steering is nice and weighty, but it's not overly so. And the whole car feels planted and it feels safe, really. I mean, it's a pretty obvious word that we all put towards Volvos, but it feels safe through the bends. I also really like the brake pedal in this car. It's nice and firm at the top and you're getting plenty of bite straight away. Just quite confidence inspiring to have a really solid brake pedal right there. The visibility in this car is good too. I've got some nice big wing mirrors and I've got a relatively good view out of the back as well. Plus, because this car isn't overly large, it's certainly not as large as the V90, I uh, don't feel like there's much problem with parking it or positioning it. It's a nice, easy car to drive at slow speeds just as much as it is at greater ones. I spent a little bit of time on the motorway in this car too, and it does that perfectly fine as well. It's comfortable, it's very easy. The only thing I can't find in this car is whether or not it has cruise control. It seems to just have a speed limiter, which for me is a bit more of a pain, but I don't know. Do you prefer a speed limiter or full-on cruise control? Let me know in the comment section below. Against something like the BMW 3 Series or the Audi A4, I think this car is quite a nice little middle ground actually. It's not as sporty as the 3 Series and it certainly doesn't have the same agility that you get on turn-in, but it comes pretty close and actually this hybrid setup is one of the more compelling ones needed because it just delivers quite a lot of power really. <laughs> I don't think it's entirely necessary to have a compact estate car designed for efficiency that delivers nearly 350 brake horsepower, but there we are. If Volvo wants to do it, I'm happy to go with it. It is, it is just the ride that comes through on this one as slightly jittery with this type of road, which I've driven on plenty of times, and I can just feel the road surface kind of bobbling the car around ever so slightly, and that's on a relatively good section. I think if this could get worse, it would start undermining what the car's all about and, and just shaking you around a little bit too much. And certainly driving on lanes which tends to throw up all kinds of issues when it comes to departure warnings and cars thinking that there's an obstacle ahead of you when there actually isn't this hasn't warned me at all not that there hasn't been anything to warn me about but what i mean is it hasn't been throwing up false warnings which makes you feel a little bit on edge because you're not entirely sure what the car's doing it feels absolutely fine so it does give the impression that volvo has now been doing a system systems for so long that it's dialing them in and, and they're becoming far more accustomed to giving you only the information you need and assisting you exactly when you need it rather than trying to butt in all of the time. I really like the Volvo V60. It's a car which brings those familiar traits that people expect from a Volvo, like a large boot and a well-made interior, but ties them together with some more modern functions like that Google-based infotainment system and the efficient plug-in hybrid setup. All in, it's a car which delivers quite a lot of positives with very few negatives and the good thing is that the v60 has been on sale for a little while now so you can get good examples on the used market for a lot less money albeit they won't be available with those brand new infotainment functions all tied together this is one very attractive estate car and for me i don't know why you'd have a crossover or a small suv when you could have this instead because it's just much nicer to drive but let me know what you think in the comments section below would you pick the v60 or would you be heading elsewhere in the car market? And since you're here, please remember to subscribe to the motors.co.uk YouTube channel. Just hit that subscribe button, then straight afterwards, go straight for the bell icon and you'll get a notification each time we upload a new video.